Hello and welcome to this video where we will look at how to transform this chaotic looking data into a table or even pivot table for analysis. We see this data has a few problems, most notably the name of an employee on a different row, but same column to the tabular data. We also have some unnecessary rows such as totals and blank rows to remove. In this video, we will transform this disorganized data into a table using the Power Query interface. We will not be writing any code at all. So let's dive in and let's transform this data. Now this data is in a CSV file, so I'm starting from a blank Excel workbook here, and I'll click on data and from text slash CSV. And here's the data I need, employee pay details 2022 to 2023, and let's import this. Here's our preview for the CSV data, and I'll click on transform data. So now we are in the brilliant Power Query interface. Now our first task here to transform this data is to remove these top three rows. We can do that simply by clicking the Remove Rows button, Remove Top Rows, I'll enter three, and when I click OK, those redundant top three rows are removed, and we're left with most of the data that we're interested in. Now the next step is to remove any further unnecessary rows. And in this scenario, they are the total rows and the blank rows. For that, we will filter them out using the filter tool in column one here. I'm going to remove the blanks and also scroll down and remove the totals. And I'll click OK and they are now removed leaving us with the employee name rows, the header rows for each employee's table, and then the data rows. Now the most chaotic thing about this data is that the employee name is separated from those data rows. Each person's name is different, making it irregular when we look at the data. But there is a pattern in their consistency and which row they occur. And we can see that this data has one header row and then it has 12 months. So adding in the name of the person, we have 14 rows for each employee. Now that is a pattern that we can work with. And we'll do this with the brilliant modulo feature of Power Query. Now let's start by inserting an index column. So add column, index column and from the drop down I'll choose from one and this will simply insert a column indexing from one all the way down to whatever the last row is. Now with the index column still selected from the add column tab we'll click on standard and ask for the modulo calculation. This will pop up a window asking us which number from which they want to find the remainder and we will provide 14. Now the reason for that, remember, is because there are 14 rows for each employee in this instance. So when we click OK, this will create a new column for that modulo calculation. We'll see it begins from number one there, all the way down to the last row of that group, shall we say, which is a zero. And then it begins again from number one. So another way of saying this is that each employee's name has the modulo of one. And that is a pattern that we can now target with a conditional column. Because what we want here is we need the employee's name in its own column. So let's do this. It's add column again, this time conditional column. We will give this column a name such as employee name and from here if the modulo column is equal to one then what we'd like to do is repeat the value from column one so from this drop down i'll choose select column 
and that column will be column one, else nothing. So if I click OK, this will repeat that employee name, the data from column one, if the modulo column has the value of one, otherwise we will get nothing. So we would get this null value. And that's ideal because with that null value there, we can now, with that column selected, go to the transform tab and fill that data down. And we now have the employee name down each row for each of that employee's tables. This is great, that's the bulk of the work done. The rest here is just getting it into the shape that we want with the headers that we want and the data types that we want. So using that modulo column again, we now want to remove the original row with the employee name. So using the filter, I'm gonna tell it to remove the values of number one in, the same rows that we used a moment ago in the conditional column, but also I want to remove those with modulo two, because those rows are the headers. So when I click OK, now the headers and the rows with the employee naming are gone, leaving us with just the data rows, but now we have the employee name in its own column. So now getting this into the shape that we need of our table, we can drag the employee name column over into column one's position. We can remove the index and modulo columns, which we no longer need, and we can rename columns one to four as we would like. With that done, we may wish to extract the dates from the pay period column. So if I select the pay period column, and from the transform tab, we can extract the last eight characters. We have a pattern here, the last eight are the end of month dates. So we can specify a count of eight, click OK, and the dates are extracted. We're then just left with our data type conversions. So pay period into date, total payments to currency, and net pay to currency. And aside from renaming our query, we're now in a place where we can load this to our destination, whether that be the data model, whether that be a table on the sheet, or maybe a pivot table. Navigate to our home tab and close and load this data to Excel. Using my default settings, this has loaded it as a connection only query and to the data model. So if desired, we could then insert a pivot table from the data model onto this existing worksheet and we can perform analysis that would have been impossible from that chaotic data in the CSV. I can now simply put employee name into rows, total payments in values, and we can get some insights from that data. So this video has hopefully shown you some of the brilliance of Power Query and how by simply using the UI and with no code we can turn some very disorganized data into a perfect tabular structure for further analysis. There's much, much more to learn with Power Query. It's an awesome tool. And for anybody who may be new to Power Query, I'm hoping this video lights that fire within your belly. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video and took anything from it, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you want to be kept informed of the latest videos at this channel. Take care, I'll see you all again soon.